All right, for this video, I'm going to walk you through how to debug and test your mapping data flows with Azure Data Factory. Now, there are several different areas within ADF that you can debug your data flows, and so it's important to understand them all and how they all work together for a complete end-to-end -end picture of the validating, verifying, and testing your data flows. All right, so let's start here. Here I am in the design surface for the mapping data flows designer within Azure Data Factory. And I have a very simple data flow for this demo. I just have a source, a sync, and a derived column. Let me show you what I'm doing inside of this data flow. Uh, the source points to a uh, text file that I have, which has uh, movies. This is the typical uh, movie data set that I use to demo with because it's very simple and it's, uh, it makes sense in terms of the content. It's movies and ratings for movies. And so this is a, uh, this is a text file in my blob store. And then uh, my sync, I'm going to put it, I'm going to keep it sitting in the, um, in blobs. I'm going to keep it essentially as a data lake scenario, and I'm going to put it into an output folder. Now the output folder is defined, the location is defined in my data set. So it's going to a container called my container. This is my blob store link service it has my credentials in it. You see that I have a folder structure called as output slash my data flow one, two, three part files. Now, if this folder structure does not already exist, Data Factory will create that when I execute this from a pipeline. When you debug from a data flow itself, you are previewing data and there is no writing of the data. So when I'm here in, um, in preview mode, in, in debug mode in the data flow, uh, you can see the data as it is being transformed throughout the process, but it will, we will not try to write data. So these settings that I have here will not take effect until I actually execute this from a pipeline. So as I've been talking, I realized that I did not turn on my uh, debug mode. So this is an important thing to do when you start working in data factory data flows is turn on the uh, debug. So let me go ahead and turn that on. I'll talk about it a little bit while it's spinning up. It's going to take a couple of minutes to start up, but you can continue to do your work and I'll continue to demo as that spins up. What's happening in, uh, in the background is that we are spinning up a Spark environment so that we can execute and we can debug your data flows. And uh, to do that, we leverage the Azure Databricks infrastructure for that. So it takes a few minutes for the cluster to start up. Now, with this debug switch on, you will always be able to then hit a live cluster. So that cluster will be used and will stay alive for 60 minutes after the last activity that you've done. What that means is that when I am previewing data, so I go to data preview and every um, transformation and every transformation within Dataflow has a data preview um, has a data preview tab on it. But what it's saying is that it's not going to show me the data until the debug session is live because there's no cluster there yet for us to be able to build data frames and put data in memory and to be able to show you the results. But there are other areas of the data flow that I can debug and I can look at to validate my logic while the, the cluster is spinning up. So on the inspect tab for each transformation, you will see the metadata. This will give you the information about the names of the columns, their ordering, the, um, their ordinal position. It'll tell you the data type, and it'll tell you whether or not it's being used within a transformation. So if I go over here to my derived column, for example, you can see that I am modifying the title column, and that's indicated here by the uh, asterisk under the updated <clears throat> column. And I, I'm not using any of the columns to create the value, a new value for title. I'm just modifying title. So let me show you what that logic looks like just so you can see. So for this very simple demo, what I'm doing is I'm pretending that title as a string column, as a string data type, perhaps this is a column that I need to obfuscate because it's sensitive data. So I'm essentially masking it by using a hash, I'm using SHA2, and I will just hash that. Now, when the cluster is ready, I'll be able to actually use data preview. So data preview will give you a snapshot of the data. So I'm back here on my source, data preview is going to show me the data before it's been transformed. Sync will show me the data after it's been transformed. This is what would get landed when I actually execute this from a pipeline. And then the uh, derived column in this case is going to show me the data preview as the data is being transformed. In fact, I'll be able to go into the expression builder and I'll be able to click inside the expression and see the results of my expression so I can validate my logic directly in each expression and the logic from each transformation ends end within data flow here within my data preview. So um, the intents of data preview and debug within data flow designer itself is to validate your logic. Now, one other thing I'm going to show you before we go into looking at the uh, data preview results once this uh, is ready is the debug settings. The debug settings allow you to control 
how much data is being sampled and whether or not you want to use uh, some other settings in your debug, such as pointing to a local file for your tests. So let me back out of this for a second. I want to show you something that's interesting is that if I had more than one source, and many times your data flows can have multiple sources because maybe you have some lookups, you're joining some data and whatnot. Let me put some other data sources on these. Let's put, uh, let's for here, let's put a, um, let's see, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll use another um, folder. That's fine. And for here, I'll use, let's use a database type for this one. And that should work. Now when I go to debug settings, each source is going to have a different setting. So what we do to make the data preview in debug mode on the um, data flow designer very uh, quick and effective and uh, give you results very quickly is to limit the amount of rows that we read in. And so the default limit is 1000. Now you can back it up and you can make it even smaller. You can say, I just want to see 10 rows, <clears throat> or you can give it a very high number and you can say, just give me the, you know, everything I've got in my, in my data source. And each one of those, these can be set. These limits can be set for each of the data sources. Um, in fact, uh, what I can also do is perhaps I have a file that has some sample rows in it. I want to, ex I want to specifically test an exact couple of rows that I have on a file. I can point to that in my blob store and I can point to that file here within the debug settings. Or if I don't have it already uploaded to my blob store, I can use a local file. So I can go ahead and I can upload file and I can then pick a local file. And then once that file is loaded, now when I click data preview, the debug will use the copy of that file um, that I've pointed to. And so it'll, it'll ignore the source settings and I'll use that instead. Now that's very important because when you're limiting the number of rows, so if I only have 100 rows here and 100 rows here, and let's say, oops, and I'll just put 100 for this last data set as well. What could happen is if I'm joining data or if I'm looking up data, there's a good chance that the keys I'm trying to match on, the keys are not going to be present on both sides of that relationship. And so you may not get the results you are looking for in your debug. And so uh, sometimes it's important to have a file that has the key values you want. And you may want to uh, bump this number up so that you're sure that you get, you have more likelihood of getting the matches that you're looking for. So that's debug settings. You can see our cluster is ready. So now we can go and we can go and look at the data. So let me uh, get rid of these because these are not important to my data flow. And on my source, when I do a data preview and refresh here, what you're going to see are just the raw original values from the source data sets. This is in the file without any transformation. As you go into the next transformation, you will see the data as it's transformed. So I'm changing the title column. So let me, this is what I said earlier. When you're in your expression builder and you're building expressions, you can view the results of your expression in real time, which is very, very helpful to be able to see that your expression is correct. And indeed you see a hash that is the same for the exact same values and it's, and it's a different hash, even when it's spelled slightly differently. So that looks good. Now in the sync, if you go to data preview, the, the sync will not execute, but you will get an example, a, you'll get a sampling of what the data will look like as it gets written. In this case, now you'll see all the data with the modified title column right there. Now, notice that on my, sort, on my sync settings, I have a setting of clear the folder. So I'm doing this because I want to test next. Now that I'm done with my, um, essentially think about me, and, and think about the process in this sense. I have now completed my data flow and I've tested my logic and I've debugged and the data looks correct. I'm now going to move on to test this in a pipeline because I want to actually write the data and confirm that the data being output is correct. So if we go on to settings, I am setting clear the folder. This option will uh, delete all the existing files in that folder, so I'm sure I don't have any um, old data in there. In fact, if you look at my folder, so this is that um, uh, my data flow one, two, three part files, you'll see that I in fact have some files in there already. So those are going to get deleted and cleared out by Data Factory when I run this. So basically from end to end, um, I believe the logic looks good. I've done that by validating the data and the data preview and everything looks like the output I want to get. Now to actually execute this in a test environment, I'm going to create a pipeline. So what I suggest you do is you create a pipeline uh, and I'm going to call this pipeline uh, test my debug. Now, before I go any further, I do want to show you that I have a save button so I can save my work. And to be able to save this before publishing to the Data Factory service, I have to hook up my Data Factory to a repository. So we support GitHub and DevOps. So I'm using GitHub. Very important to do this so that you can save this incrementally and you can then um, 
uh, how you, you can maintain versions of your data factory. Um, if you don't connect up to a repo, every time you make a change, you have to publish those changes directly to the service. This is a much better way to work. Now, what I'm going to do for tests, I'm going to just add that data flow by putting a data flow activity onto my onto my science surface on the canvas. And I had called this, uh, this is called debug demo one. There we go. There it is. Finish that. Now, that's all I need for my test is just one simple pipeline with one activity, which is running that data flow. If you look at the settings, you'll see that you can set different um, integration runtimes for your activity. So you can change the size of that, um, of the cluster that we use, the uh, essentially the Databricks cluster. When I am in debug mode, this debug button here will, will run debug from the pipeline and will use the debug cluster. So it will, it's not going to use the custom integration runtime that you have set here. It's going to use whatever cluster is defined here. And here I'm using the auto integration auto resolve integration runtime. Now this is the only available option you have to you. We're updating this so you can uh, change the size of your debug cluster. That's going to land very soon. For now, this is all that you have. But what that means is that this already live cluster is going to be used. So this will run immediately when you click debug. So the next step you do is run debug. Now this is going to execute the source and sync settings. And this will go ahead and land that data into the blob store folder. While it's cooking, I want to show you one more thing about that. You don't have to, during that debug test mode, you don't have to um, always use the entire data set. We also have a setting in the source here <clears throat> that is called sampling. If you turn that on, you can set also a row limit for um, the pipeline mode as well. Just remember to turn this off when you're done with it. You, you want to only use this for the purpose of testing, right? Because you want to limit the rows. So the debug mode, the debug test here would honor those. When this is done, you're going to get the execution plan will come out uh, as part of the execution. So we'll be able to see how long everything took and how many partitions we used and all that sort of information. And we'll then be able to see whether or not we got the results that we're looking for. So um, when that's done, there is one last step, which is you will then do a, uh, I would uh, then perform a trigger now. So trigger now will turn this into a essentially a triggered pipeline and will run this from the service. That would be your final test. Once that's done, you have done all of your end-to-end -end testing, then you can create triggers and you can schedule these pipelines to run. Um, and probably your pipeline at that point would be more complex than just a single data flow. But this one data flow test is good enough that your data flow is now succeeding within a pipeline, which means now that you're done, you can publish this, right? in the data flow you've created my debug demo one will become a um, a data flow that, that other designers within your organization could use in their data factory pipelines as well so this completed my test completed we can look at the execution plan we can see that it succeeded and we can see that, that it took uh, almost five seconds to execute that sounds about right and everything was good so so i'm happy with that now the final test would be let's go and look at the data Let's make sure the data landed exactly where you want to. This is the old data I showed you earlier from the folder from a day or so ago when I first created this demo and messed up the, the audio. Let's refresh this and let's make sure that it did clear the folder, did give us new files, and it did. Let's take a look at that um, file. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to download that and we'll open up that CSV. Notice that I, I did not change the naming of the file. Um, I just allowed Spark to do its thing to create partition files. This only had one single partition in it. It's, it's a very small sample, a uh, very small data set. And so I was able to get the one CSV. Let's take a look at that data. Let's make sure that it's right. There it is. And there are the titles now obfuscated and masked. And we're all good and happy. And that's it. So that pretty much is the way that you would debug and end your data flows in Data Factory. Thanks for watching.